We continue in the essentials of uh, fiqh. We have spoken last week about the types of water. And we mentioned some issues. The first, the definition of cleaning, of, of purity. And we mentioned about the physical purity. And we mentioned about the types of water, issue number two, the types of water. And issue number three, the cleaning water, if it is mixed with Najasa with impurity and issue number four the cleaning water with, with when it is mixed with a pure thing and issue number five the rule of the used cleaning water issue number six the rule of leftover water after drinking from by animals and humans. Now, chapter 2 about Tahara. Chapter 2 in book number 1 The rules of vessels. The rules of vessels. The vessels that are used for cleaning or used for eating or drinking. The rules of vessels. You understand vessels? Yeah, yes. Mm. <coughs> this is the chapter 2? Yes. <coughs> chapter 2 in Tahara, in purity or cleaning. Mm. What are the vessels? The vessels are the containers of things, whether it is water or other liquids or food or whatever. And it can be from different materials. It can be from metal, it can be from uh, glass, it can be from uh, any other type of material. Yeah. <coughs> Issue number one, the use of golden and silver vessels in cleaning. the use of golden and silver vessels in cleaning. <coughs> All types of vessels uh, made of any material including gold and silver it can be used for cleaning it can be used for cleaning so to wash your hands to take bath to uh, make a stinja okay all of those types of cleaning so all types of vessels including Golden and silver vessels can be used in cleaning. Mm. A special rule for 
the vessels made of gold and silver, it cannot be used for containing food that you eat. Because the Nabi Sallallahu said in the hadith, لا تشربوا في آنية الذهب والفضة ولا ولا تأكلوا في صحافها فإنها لكم في الدنيا فإنها لهم في الدنيا ولكم في الآخرة. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the Muslims, don't eat uh, or drink in vessels made of gold or, filled, or, or silver because it is for the kuffar in dunya and it is for you in akhirah so the kuffar can use them in eating for eating and drinking in dunya but you use them in akhirah so it is important to write this hadith also as it is the proof of the rule of the prohibition don't eat or drink in vessels made of gold or silver. It is for the kuffar in dunya and it is for you, mean the Muslims in Akhirah. هذا من باب الزهد في الدنيا تواضع نعم لأن هذا معنى الكلام الذي لأنها لا هي لكم لهم في الدنيا ولكم في الآخرة ولا ولكم في الآخرة ولا هم في الدنيا ولكم في الآخرة There is another hadith Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said الذي يشرب في آنية الفضة إنما يجرجر في بطنه نار جهنم. The one who drink from silver vessels, he is drinking Jahannam fire in his stomach. The one who drink from silver vessels, he is putting Jahannam fire in his stomach. The one who drink in silver vessels is putting Jahannam fire in his stomach. Only drink or drink and eat? Yeah, the same. But this hadith is drink. Can you see anyone who drink from Gold and silver? Yes. Know? So this is, this is um, just told the text of the hadith. Hmm. But the prohibition is general. Yeah, but, uh, because it is general in the first hadith. The second hadith is an additional warning for this. So the vessels of <coughs> made of gold or made of silver, it is prohibited to eat or drink in them. Another uh, thing in, the, in, in this issue also, uh, the vessels which are not uh, golden or silver vessels, but it can be painted with gold or silver. You know, sometimes the thing itself is not golden, but it is painted with gold or painted with silver. What is the rule of this? The rule of this, there is difference between ulama about this. Uh, the accurate rule that it is mostly approved is the rule of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, that it is allowed to use. Because Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, the Hanbali fiqh, it is prohibited. And 
Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, it is allowed under conditions. And uh, Imam Malik rahimahullah, also there are two opinions of his students. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, it is allowed because there is no prohibition for the prohibition only for golden or silver things. There is no prohibition about the things that are painted with gold or silver. So the vessels which are not allowed to use for eating or drinking are the golden and silver vessels. The things which are made of gold or silver, not the things which are painted with gold or silver. And the same rule about wearing things for men. If someone wear a watch which is painted by gold, it is not golden. Okay? This is not prohibited because the prohibition is for the things which are golden. So there is two words in English. Gold and golden. <coughs> okay? What is silver the same? Hmm? Uh, silver watch, is that the same? Is it prohibited too? No, the silver things under any condition for men uh, are, uh, are allowed. Yeah. And who allowed this to drink and eat from this? You said which Imam? Hmm? Which Imam allowed to drink and eat from the silver who is painted? Uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. Oh. Sure, what about building some in you know, a hotel in Dubai they have gold inside to make this place expensive and different no this uh, this we are talking about the prohibition in vessels okay. other things maybe it is the veer israf you understand israf extra like yeah okay. spending a lot of money in things which are not necessary this is haram in Islam. Okay. Some people, they make their toilet yeah. from gold, for example. Yeah. One Saudi prince, prince is doing this. It's haram. Yeah, because this is Israf. There are a lot of people who need yeah. uh, who need the food, and he's uh, putting his urine in uh, gold. I made a small mistake, small mistake, the things which are made of gold are called gold, not golden. Golden are the things which are appearing like gold. Okay? Yes. So, it is, it is prohibited to uh, eat and drink in gold vessels, not golden. Okay? But you understand, of course, what I mean, the things yeah. which are made of gold. <coughs> and what was the view of Imam Shafi? Imam Shafi Allah, said it is allowed under condition. The condition is that the amount of gold or silver in the thing must be very small so that if you melt the vessel, you cannot take gold or silver out of it. Hanbali uh, prohibited. Issue number two, the vessels of non-Muslims, the vessels of Kuffar. What, what is the meaning? The vessels of Kuffar mean that the vessels that are used by Kuffar, by non-Muslims.
this means that the vessels of people who are mostly non-Muslims working in a place in a public kitchen, for example, the vessels of in restaurants, which are which most of the customers are non-Muslims, and the recipe contains uh, sometimes pork or not halal meat. Okay, the vessels of non-Muslim people inside their houses. What is the role of this? It is mainly halal, unless you are sure there is some najasa put in these vessels. What is najasa? Najasa impurity. Oh. Yeah. Najasa like what? Najasa is not uh, is not only urine or stool. What well, what we'll describe in details later, but the things. The meat of the dead animal that they eat is najasa. The meat of the pork is najasa. Uh, Sometimes they eat uh, blood. We have in Norway here blood pudding, I think. Yeah. This is also najasa. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالْدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرُ The the, 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 the meat of the dead animal, non-slaughtered animal, is haram and it is najasa because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this is najasa and uh, the blood is also impure, najasa and the uh, anything comes from the pork, from the pig is najis. So, uh, as long as these vessels, for example, vessels that are used for tea or coffee, in some places of work, you find uh, in the kitchen they have some mugs for coffee. So what is put there is either tea or coffee or some other hot drink. None of this is najis. So I mean these vessels, even if it are if if it is used by kuffar, it is not. Najis, because we have said before that the leftover water which uh, the Muslim man, Muslim human or Kafir human drink from it, it can be used for cleaning, right? So, in the same way the vessels which are used by the Kuffar for uh, eating or drinking clean things, it is not najis, it can be used by Muslims as well. Uh, uh, can you use this after you wash this? Yeah, we will mention now what it uh, If it is known that those vessels, they contain sometimes najasa, for example, the vessels in the lunch room, if you are working in a company and then you have the lunch room, some people they eat pork. Okay? Some people they eat meat which is not halal. So there is najasa put into these vessels. In this condition, you cannot use them before you wash. There is hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam One Sahabi asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said, Ya Rasulullah, we live in a place of Ahl al-Kitab, Christian people Should we eat in their vessels? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't eat in their vessels unless you don't find other vessels that they don't use. If you don't find other vessels other than other than theirs, then wash them and then eat in them. Okay? So it is better to have your own vessel. If you don't have, then you can just wash the vessels and then eat or drink in them. For especially for the vessels that are used for food. 
because food can contain Najasa for the Kuffar. I have a question about halal meat. What is the, what is the knowledge about the halal meat? You can mention about this later because it is a, it is a common subject. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, in the in the lunch room, in, in uh, if you are working in a company, normally people nowadays they don't eat. No one eat in, in the vessel of someone else before it is washed. And now they have this uh, uh, washing machine for the kitchen tools. So as long as the things are washed, then you can just eat in this place. But if you are in a place, for example, uh, there is no means for, uh, for, for washing everything, or uh, you are not 100% sure if this is washed or not, then you have to wash it yourself. Issue number three. So what we said now in issue number two about the vessels of kuffar, it, it includes eating and drinking and cleaning as well. What is the meaning of cleaning? That you can use the water in this vessel to make wudu. So this for eating and drinking and cleaning. The rule of using the vessels of kuffar in eating, or drinking, or, or cleaning. <laughs> Issue number two, the vessels which are made of the liver of the dead animal. You understand liver? Skin. Yeah, when, when it is when it is alive, it's called skin. When yeah. it is yeah. processed, like ah, yeah, the yeah. shoe or yeah, the yeah. bag, it's called leather. which are made of the leather of dead animals. <coughs> People at the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to uh, travel in the desert and they used to have water in the uh, bags made of leather. Okay? And sometimes food also is put there. Maybe this is not common nowadays, but sometimes <coughs> it can happen. So the rule is that uh, whatever the leather is processed, processed is, is there is a process called uh, tanner. Tanner is to uh, wash the leather of the animal with some acids and some chemicals and then to take it and make the shoes or bags from it. So as long that this leather is processed, standard, then it is clean. Because the skin of the dead animal, the same as the flesh, it is not clean. But if it is processed, then it is clean. Standard, it is clean. Eat. 
clean for eating and drinking and for uh, making wudu? Yes. Eating and drinking and clean. So those are the issues of vessels. Hmm. Yeah, we will tell about this now. Uh, now, chapter number three. Chapter number three about the unclean things, the nudges things. Things or this uh, plates or this? No, unclean things okay. in general. Nudges. Number one, the urine and stool of the human. The urine and stool. What is stool? Stool. That when, when you do toilet, either you do urine or stool. Yeah. <laughs> of human. Number two, Mavi. Mavi, you know what is Mavi? There are uh, three things that come of the of the man: the urine and many is the semen, the semen of the man. This is not najis. Yeah, it's only in, uh, in the Hanafi Madhab, Abu Hanifa said it is Najis. But uh, most of the ulama said it is not Najis. Well, you have to clean before it. You have, if you have, hmm? I think you have to clean this uh, if you have seen in your clothes you like this. Or at least scrap, huh? Yeah, sometimes Nabi Sallam just yeah. scratch like this so that it is. Uh, yeah. But uh, we are talking about something else. This is called many. Many. This is the same. Madhi is another uh, thing that comes out before the mani. So, for example, if someone has the sexual desire, but he did not reach to the top, there is some other liquid come out of him, this is called madhi, before the mani comes. So, this madhi is not, the mani is white and it is sticky. The madhi is not white and it's not sticky. It is have pure color and is liquid, the same as uh, not stick. And this madhi is najis. So the mani is not najis, but the madhi is najis. The same rule as the yuri. And when it comes out of you, you feel it. 
because of course you feel the urine, you feel the mani, and you feel this also. So this is najis. And if it come out of, comes out of you, then you have to renew your wudu. You have to make it sinja the same. If you go and urinate, you have to make another wudu. Right. Your wudu is not... Is, Do is, is, take is, a is, no, not ghus. Ghus only for many. Yeah, the clothes you can... Uh, he's asking about the clothes. The clothes you can uh, clean the place itself. We don't need to wash the whole thing. Because normally it is a small amount. You can take a small amount of water by your hand and just do like this in that place. Another thing that comes out of the man is called wadi. Wadi is also something that comes out of you when, for example, when you carry some heavy thing, very heavy. Sometimes it comes out. This is not urine, but this is called wadi. And it is also najis. Wadi. Wadi. Arabic. So the mani, the semen is not najis, but the mazi that comes before the mani in case of sexual desire, this only comes in case of sexual desire. This is najis. And wadi that comes out in case of carrying a heavy thing or doing uh, a big effort with your muscles, this is also najis, wadi. So the, the mani is not najis, the mazi and wadi are najis. The same rule is applied all these nudges. Hmm? The rule is the same for all these. Yes. Things. We are mentioning the things which are nudges. Mm. So the first are the urine and stool of human. Second, mazi and wadi of human. Third, urine and stool of animals which are not eaten. Uh, which are not eatable animals. The urine and stool of animals which are not eatable. Is the fourth or the third? Or third, because the second is both Madi and Wadi. Uh, mm -hmm. mm. Prohibited animals. Yes, the animals which are prohibited to eat. So, the same for cats, mouses, <coughs> mice. Urine and what? Urine and stool. Okay. But the same like the first one. Okay. And you can find some animals which are close to each other. For example, it is haram to eat the meat of the donkey. Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day he went to visit some uh, people and they cooked some donkey meat for him. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, throw it. It is haram to eat the meat of the donkey. But it is halal to eat the meat of the, ho of the horse. There is no prohibition to eat the meat of the horse. And one day, one Sahabi, uh, he found some poor family, one woman and uh, small children, and they don't have food. So he slaughtered his own horse, and he cooked for them to eat. And it's mm. not about the donkey, that the domestic donkey is prohibited, and the wild donkeys... Yes, the wild donkeys are not prohibited. You understand the wild donkeys that have uh, black strips uh -huh. and there? That's in the jungle. Zebra. 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 Yes, it's called zebra. Zebra, yes. You can eat zebra. You can eat the zebra. Mm. But why was donkey uh, prohibited? A lot blood maybe. Yeah, the, oh, the donkey meat contains a lot of blood in it. Oh. Even if you cook the meat of the donkey, it's still, uh, it will still be red. And the pig? Why, why, is, mm? why is the pig prohibited? There are many reasons. <laughs> it have a lot of bacteria in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we will come to this, inshallah. Yes, inshallah. <coughs> Okay. 
So the urine and stool of the animals which are not eating. There are also some birds are not eating. Not only animals. The birds which eat meat, like the eagles. So all of those cannot eat the, uh, the, the meat of it. But if you don't have something to eat... This is something else. We will come to the rule of uttirar, the rule of having to. Mm, yes. Someone doesn't find anything to eat. Uh, the things which are mentioning now are the things which are 100% najis, mean that there is no, uh, the, the, there is a clear proof from Quran or Hadith that it is najis. Mm. The things which are, we are mentioning now. Some other things, some, other, some ulama say that it is najis, some other ulama say it is not. Okay? So, number four, the blood of Hayd and Nifas. Understand what is Hayd? Hayd is the menstruation period of the woman. Okay, this is called Hayd in Arabic. Nifas. Nifas is the period after giving birth. After the woman gives birth, also she will have from 10 to 40 days, depends. Is also blood or something else? Blood, yes. The blood of Hayd and the blood of Nifes. The blood of Hayd, the blood that comes out of the woman in, in the, in the uh, time of Hayd, it is different from the fresh blood. It is not uh, red like the other blood. It is dark. It is, not, uh, it is very dark red and it has some smell. Okay? So this blood is Najis. The same for the blood of Nifas, that for the, for the woman contains for about 10 to 40 days after giving birth, blood comes <coughs> out of her. And in this, in this time she cannot uh, fast, she cannot pray. But, uh, the time of Hayd or the time of Nifas. And this blood of Hayd or Nifas, both of them are Najis. So those days she cannot fast and she cannot uh, do salah. When Umar radiallahu anhu he made fatah to Al-Quds and he went to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa at that time, the, the ones who were in control of Al-Quds, they were Christian Catholics. So, uh, they cons this, this place, before they come, it was used by Jews. And they hated the Jews. So, they cons they taken this uh, masjid, this uh, square, this big square. You know, there is a lot. There is a big uh, fence around uh, Masjid Aqsa, and there are two masjids there. Yeah. Masjid, the masjid with the with the golden uh, uh, dome, and the masjid with the green dome. Okay, and the Masjid Aqsa is the whole area. Uh, so there is a big fence. This area, at the time of, of, of the Roman Empire, when they were uh, having control over it, it was considered as a place of garbage. They used it to just throw their garbage, because this was the place of worshipping for Jews, and they didn't like them. They did not like them. Even the Women who uh, have menstruation period, they put, you know, they put some clothes to prevent the blood. They used to go and throw those in this, in, in the place of the masjid there. So when Umar anhu came with the Sahaba, they entered the Quds. They first they cleaned the masjid from all of these things. But if this uh, blood came to your clothes, what you have to do? You have to wash. All clothes or the, or the place? The place that have the adjacent. Yes.
Okay. So number four is the blood of Hayat and Nifas. Number five, the saliva of the dog. You understand the saliva of the dog? It is called the saliva, saliva of the dog. Saliva is the water inside your mouth. Okay. The saliva of the dog means that uh, not the dog itself. It is all all of it is nudges. Just the saliva of the dog is nudges. Okay. So if the dog leaks your clothes, you have to wash them. On. Hmm? On his if you know the place that he only leaks and you wash it, it's it's okay. But if you don't know, then you just put it in the washing machine. Now it is easy to wash things. You just put it in the washing machine and this is automatic. You don't need to do anything. Uh, but if you touch it, the dog itself, if you, you know, here you can find dogs everywhere. If you are walking in the market or the mall or garden, whatever, in any public place, and a dog touches you, you don't need to wash because it is not the dog's body, it is the dog's saliva that from its mouth. But you should not uh, play with the dog. Say that, for example, I can just uh, uh, touch the dog's body because animals, whenever they they, they have uh, they want to scratch in their body, they don't scratch with their no, they do like this. Okay, all animals do like this, so the dog can touch any part of his body by his tongue. So you should be careful not to touch the dog uh, only if it is necessary. But if, if, it, if it happened that the dog itself, the dog body touched your clothes, you don't need to wash them because it is not his body, it is the, the saliva that come, comes out of his mouth. I didn't understand this one. Hmm? It's only saliva from his mouth, it's not just not okay, his body. Okay, okay, yeah, yes. Yeah. If he passing by him. I go, Okay, so number five in the Najis things, the saliva of the dog. Number six, the dead animal. The dead animal. But uh, even the animal we can eat? Yes, if it is dead. I mean, it, it is not slaughtered. No. Okay? The dead animals, except, except three things. A, B, and C. The dead animal is nudges, whether it is, eat whether, whether it is eatable or not, except three things. Number one, the dead fish The dead fish, because we don't slaughter the fish, okay? And the grasshoppers, you understand the grasshoppers? It's some type of, of insect that come with 
a lot of yeah a lot of uh, huge numbers and they come to farms and they finish all of the plants yeah. there yeah for it's God. called jarad jarad in arabic grasshoppers mm. this is number two no, no this is the same number one yeah. the dead fish and the grasshoppers because in the Arab area some people they eat these grasshoppers it's like this not big one it's small yeah yeah sometimes it is big yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it's that length I forgot the name this I know what is this but yeah it's called in English grasshoppers grass you know grass in English yeah hoppers grasshoppers Hmm? No, no. Understand this. You can this tell it. What? Say it again. Saranja. Ah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is Chichelian, eh? Yeah, sure. Come on, some Saranja. Yeah. Okay. B, in the exception, uh, the dead things which have no running blood, which have, which have no running blood, like small insects, like flies. Mm. If you kill the fly and it comes in your clothes, it is not necessary because there is no running blood for the fly. But okay. there is some blood there. Yeah, but the blood of the fly is not, is not real blood. Mm. How you say this? Um, the dead animals we, who don't have running blood. No? Then they will not be named as animals. No. The things, the things. Because yeah, all of the animals they have, they have running blood. If you call it, if you call them animals, like flies, like ants. You know, ants. Mm. We don't have running blood. Like bees. You know bees. Yeah. Yeah. is not majestic. Hmm? They are not majestic. Yes, this is one of the exceptions. Mm -hmm. Do you mean by touching them it is majestic? Mm -hmm. No, if they are dead. Yes. And they, they are not nages. Okay, if you touch them. Okay. Yes, if you touch them if they are not nages. If you they are dead in your clothes, if there is you beat them and they are in your clothes, then they are not nages also. Okay. The mosquito, understand the mosquito mm. that bites. Yeah. If you beat it, you will find red blood, and this normally human blood. Mm, yeah. Okay, mm. so this blood, there is difference between ulama, but the most accurate that this blood is najis. You have to wash. Ask the muhandis in my language. I forgot mm. this. What is asking you about mosquitoes? And Muhammad? what is the That's name right. of mosquito in Ah, okay. Ah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Is was C or B? Hmm? Is was still B or in C? Uh, no, I just mentioned this is uh, not not inside the exception. The ah. mosquito is not inside the exception. Okay. Mm. Just can because it gets blood from human. For example, mosquito with little bit of blood. We have yeah, you have to wash it. I wash it. If there is blood that appears, because some sign the mosquito did not eat anything, so if you kill it, you don't see blood. Okay. 
And if you already make salat, and then you see that in your clothing was blood, then you We will mention about this. If you saw the najasa of uh, your clothes after salat, what to do? But you how to make wudu, yeah? Hmm? You how to make wudu? No, if you have najasa in your hand, yeah. you don't need to make another wudu. You just wash the najasa. Ah. Okay? When we mention about wudu, there are some rules of wudu. Some things called nawaqid wudu. What are the things that destroys your wudu? Uh, number C from the exceptions the bones and the nails and the hair and the horns of the dead animals those, those are not nails the bones the nails the hair the horns of the dead animal are not nages. So those can be used. I forgot my I will say them again. Number no, one, I yeah. I just Three forgot my Bones, <laughs> nails, hair, and horns. Okay? So if you found a dead animal, uh, you can use the wool if you found a dead lamb for example you can cut the wool and use it okay you can use the horns we use these horns to yeah for what to drink like from old tradition so okay use yes <laughs> and the same for the uh, one second The same for the feathers. You understand feathers? You know some anima the, the animals have hair, the birds have feathers. 